the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. at home I saw a family coming they were in a bus um, public transport coming and the Lord was just revealing to me the pain that that family has gone through and I believe they are here to take up time to minister to you and um, so much pain so much losses so much tragedies and the Lord is going to visit that family in Jesus' name. I just saw it while I was at home preparing. Jeremiah chapter 30, we're reading 16 to 19. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them. Somebody say no escape. Every one of them shall go into captivity. Spoil thee shall be a spoil, and they that prey upon thee shall be a prey. For I will restore health unto thee, I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they call thee an outcast. Saying, This Zion, who no man seeketh after. 18. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tent and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be builded on her own heap, and the palaces shall remain after the manner thereof. 19. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them. And they shall not be few. And I will glorify them. And they shall not be small. The spirit for one minute to just let this word. If I say nothing else tonight, if I say nothing else tonight, this is the counsel of God. Whatever devoid you shall be devoid, whatever prayed upon you shall be a prayer. This is your word that we believe. I will restore, I will heal. Shabrakato Sadabalakata, Shekete Prakato Lakata, Prakato Labadia.
somebody sit down. If you don't believe what I said, you will never see it happen. But if you believe tonight, um, I know that it's, it's, it's not very comfortable outside, so just, just cooperate with the ushers and the protocol department as they help to make readjustments. It's going to be a lot of sacrifice tonight. I want us to just prepare our hearts. But I assure you that it will be a worthy bargain at the end of the meeting. It's going to be a lot of sacrifices, both for those outside, inside. Um, we have to make do with what we have. But I know that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Everyone here has lost something at one point or the other. We've lost relationships. We've lost money. We've lost opportunities. We've lost loved ones. We've lost time. We've lost several precious things in our lives. And um, losses are tragic in nature. Every time you lose something, the feeling is not a good feeling. The difference between giving and losing is your willingness. When you give, you give willingly. When you lose things, they leave you outside of your consent and permission. Are we together now? If I give a hundred thousand naira, I did it consciously and so although it left me, there is joy because I understand that I sent it into my future on assignment. But when 100,000 is stolen from me or leaves me, it pains me because it was not part of my plan. But as we know, this by the grace of God is a house of mysteries. And a mystery is a modus operandi, a, a system of operation. The kingdom operates on mysteries. And one of the mysteries that are available for the saints to be able to tap into the possibilities of God is the mystery of restoration. A provision in the dealings of God with men where men can get back things that they part with. This is the powerful thing about this our God that in his dealings with men when a thing leaves you it does not leave the earth and that there is a system that can call it back hallelujah I want to share with you four keys very quickly before we pray please aside from the maybe the minister stand let no seats be vacant um, if we have to share let's share let's do whatever we have to do it's a lot of sacrifice Key number one, you want to experience restoration in your life, you must believe that God is almighty. Now, hold on, don't, don't assume you understand what I just said. God is multifaceted in his operation. Everybody say multifaceted. When it comes to his dealings with man, he fragments himself into dimensions so that man can understand and can relate with him. Are we together? The excellency and the, the nature of God is such that until he breaks himself dimensionally, it becomes impossible for man to understand him. The dimensions of God are encapsulated in his names. They are a revelation of a dimension of what he can do. Are we together now? So Moses said, who shall I tell them has sent me? And he said, I am. Now that's a very serious statement because I am is not a name. I am is a manifesto. Are we together? Like a politician comes to tell you, this is what I can do. And so he says, who should I go and tell Pharaoh has sent me? What is your specialty, O oh God? Are you a specialist in fertility? Are you a specialist in um, agriculture? Are you a specialist in making our crops grow? Are you a specialist in war? Are you a specialist in manipulating the constellations? And God said, I am. Go and ask Pharaoh. When they were teaching you, did you ever hear of any name in your curriculum called I am? In other words, I am only limited by what you think I can do. I am. I am. There's no limitation. All 
all the other gods that they had seen were specialists in an area and the gods did not dapple into their various offices if you were a god responsible for agriculture you stayed there if you were a god responsible for protecting the people in the time of war you stayed there so moses was saying number what are you in that list of dimensions and god said me no i'm not one of the rest i sit in a class all by myself i am are we together now yes but then when it comes to experiencing the manifested power of god you must you must you, you must be able to invoke a dimension of him you can't invoke all of God to be made manifest in a place. Now he feels everywhere, he feels all and in all, but when it comes to his operation, are we together? Yes. The same way um, Pastor Alpha, for instance, is not a husband to his children. He can't be a husband to his children. That possibility does not exist. Yet he's a husband. But that dimension is not permitted to be revealed to the children. They can only know him as father. But there is another personality who based on a, a type of alignment can see a dimension the children will not see. Now he can be a father to his wife. But he cannot be a husband to the children. So as far as the children know, we have a great man and he's a father and they stop there. But the wife has another dimension. Are we together? So when it comes to the dealings of God, God spreads his names and says, choose which of them. And you don't choose, your faith is the selector. You look at the trouble and the challenges and the Holy Spirit helps you to reveal, to open to you all the dimensions of the possibilities that are in God. And through faith you pick out and say, God, I want you to arise as a man of war here. Lord, I want you to arise as a restorer. The dimension of God that is responsible for restoration is called El Gibor, the mighty one. There is a name he is called. Don't be careless about this understanding. El Gibor is a revelation. The mighty one. Many men in scripture um, were called mighty. Nimrod. Nimrod Kush was called mighty. Og, the king of Bashan, was called mighty. Goliath of God was called mighty. There were kings in ancient times that had fortifications and they were called mighty. But when you call him El Gibor, does not come as a gentle dove. El Gibor means it is like one who comes to make a statement. That's why we started that scripture that those who pray upon you shall become a prey. Remember, the Bible says you cannot enter a place except you have capacity to bind a strong man. So you must believe that God is Almighty. Jeremiah 32, verse 17. Two scriptures quickly. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth. How? By thy great power. And stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for you. That's El Gibor, the mighty one. It is within his power. Lord, I know it's one thing for God to be willing to step into your life. It's another thing to believe he possesses that dimension. Are we together now? Yes. In Isaiah chapter 9, I, I think he has 9 verse um, 4, 5, 6. Give us verse 6. Isaiah 9, 6. Isaiah began to prophesy the names that this great God will be called. Now manifest in the flesh, in the person of Jesus. And he said, he shall be called. His name shall be, number one, wonderful counselor. Not wonderful, comma, counselor. Wonderful counselor as a description. Number two, he says, please, um, the mighty God. There is a dimension. He is not just a wonderful counselor. He can be the mighty God. The same one is an, the everlasting father. The same God is the prince of peace. He can reveal several of these dimensions for you. 
Tonight we want to see the mighty God, El Kibor, the one who can arise and help the helpless, the one who can arise and intimidate every force and every situation that defies his name in your life. Number two, the second key to releasing restoration in your life is joy. Joy expressed in perfected praise. Joy that is expressed in and through perfected praise. There is nonsense praise. There is carnal praise. There is devilish praise. There is perfected praise. It says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained praise. Thou hast perfected praise. Perfected praise is ordained praise. Praise with an anointing on it. Like you ordain a man and the man changes. Your praise can be anointed and it can sustain an ability to become a weapon, an instrument of breakthrough, an instrument of judgment. Joy is a very powerful mystery in the Bible. Habakkuk chapter 3, when you read from verse 17 to 19, the Bible begins to describe what looks like the life of many believers. Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 to 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall not be heard in the stalls. What is my response? Yet, yet, everybody say yet. In spite of what it is that I'm seeing, in spite of what seems to be my situation now, I demonstrate my trust in God. I demonstrate my faith in His person and ability by rejoicing. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God who is able to save me, the God of my salvation. I will joy. Your joy is, is, is in hope. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Joy is very powerful. And the clearest way to express joy is in praise. Ordained praise. Perfected praise. Psalms 42 and verse 5, please. Very powerful scripture. Psalm 42 and verse 5. It says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? It says, Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. My awareness that it is within his power to help me is what makes me to praise him. Like someone comes before a king and you praise that king knowing that he's a benevolent king. He says, Lord, I have learned something about your countenance that my help is in your countenance. You can smile on me. That's what we call favor. And so I dance. And so I praise. Brothers and sisters, listen. It's dawning on the body of Christ afresh. The age-long neglected mystery of cheap breakthrough. This mystery of praise. It's been chorused by several men of God for several years. But I'm glad that the body of Christ is sudden. It's like a veil that is being torn. And they are realizing that sorrow, lamentation, languishing, regrets, negative confessions, all of these things are programming men towards disaster. And people are learning to be spiritual now. Understanding that praise is not just about music. Dancing is not just about shaking your body. We are beginning to extract the revelation from these experiences. And it's now returning life to the mystery. Because you see, it's revelation that gives life to a mystery. A mystery can become a religious practice when there is no life. It is your understanding, the construction of your belief as you engage that mystery that makes it alive and capable of producing results. Even the word of God, the Bible says, can be made of no effect. Praise the Lord. Your giving can be made of non-effect. Your tithing can be made of non-effect. It is not the activity but the understanding that sponsors what you do that gives life to the revelation. That's why the Bible says in all your getting, it says get understanding. Praise. Praise is a powerful mystery in the spirit. 
those who have defied circumstances and said life will not make me cry for sorrow again those are the people who have stamped the gates of hell forever i made up my mind as a person that if ever tears will come out of my eyes it will be tears of joy tears of joy tears of joy i have grown old enough in the spirit for the devil to not make me look helpless listen believers let me teach you how to frustrate satan rejoice regardless of the circumstances the bible says rejoice evermore again i say rejoice satan walks in the realm of the flesh is his domain so he studies the effect of situations on your faith he studies the effect of situations on your convictions all of a sudden you find out that there's a pain on your leg and he's studying your response he's seeing how you are frowning at god and sending a text message to everybody i don't know how my life is you just finish a prayer seminar or a word seminar discussing the faithfulness of god you just had a morning devotion learning that god is faithful and then a situation dwindles your belief to a point where you can almost curse God. Our generation is full of angry people. And we do not know that our anger and the sadness of our countenance is a programming. We are programming our environment to be conducive for the activities of demons. Apostle, do you know what it means to look for a child's coffees? Which of you by frowning can add a single naira to his bank account. See that? One of the first signs of depression is the inability to communicate with joy. When people are depressed, they sit down, they are gloomy, they look older than their age, and that's exactly what the devil wants. You want restoration, you must believe, and you must start rejoicing, rejoicing, rejoicing rejoicing most times when you see people happy and rejoicing don't think it's because everything has manifested physically you'd be lying are we together yes most times when you see people happy they say why are you always smiling it's like you're not in nigeria babe. you wake up in the morning and walk around the streets of our city and you find angry people angry bus conductors angry drivers angry employees angry students someone just gets up in the morning and is angry he sees you laughing and he's just angry at it say i will rejoice being joyful is a choice for you now because the holy spirit the custodian of that joy is already it's called the joy of the Holy Ghost. You can choose. I have, I have made up my mind to program my environment to always project joy. Because in the realm of the spirit, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. If you lack joy, you lack strength. And the Bible says, for with joy shall you draw. Joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit. With it you draw from the wells of salvation. Are we together? There are people outside, you can imagine, in the rain, but define it. Some persons may be there and the devil will want to just make you feel angry and say, my husband or my wife delayed me, I would have been inside now. But I want, I want you to rejoice. When you rejoice, you paralyze, you paralyze. Um, in fact, the Bible says a merry heart is therapeutic. A merry heart doeth good in the similitude of medicine the same way a patient takes medicine and it begins to work on him he says in that similitude a merry heart just being happy can keep you healthy alive say i will rejoice say it again i will rejoice and it only comes alive every time i hear your voice it comes alive every time I hear your voice. There's a joy in my heart. In spite of all the sadness that surrounds me. And the joy that's in my heart only comes alive.
apostle what should I do when I hear bad news lock yourself put on a song of worship don't mind the tears as they roll don't mind what you hear begin to celebrate what happens if the brother said he will not marry me again I know you are human but you are also spiritual whatever dimension you permit is what find expression what if I thought I would get the job and the job is not coming dance and celebrate the one who woke me up can give me a job the one who gave me strength to write the aptitude test although I failed he's still alive listen I'm not telling you what I don't do I have already danced all the miracles of this miracle service I've already rejoiced it I didn't just pray it I spent the night forcing your healing to arrive here both the pastor and the deliverer are not mysteries we know them <laughs> ah! may you lose the ability to wrinkle yourself to old age just because of this this thing around no no choose to be joyful choose to be joyful lord things are not like that yet tomorrow by nine o'clock my landlord is coming. My landlord has already told me, you can go to church, but nine o'clock is me that will wake you in the morning. Lord, what should I do? Even if you cry, he's still coming. So why don't you rejoice? Are we together? Apostle, I thought that my son, you know, would, 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 my son would, would get a very nice job. I thought he was working only to find out that he's been five years without a job. We are dying in this family. Apostle, I did not even eat. I came here hungry. Brothers and sisters, it's joy that will put food in that plate. Your anger is pushing that plate far from you. So bring it closer by rejoicing. a very big God who is always by my side, a mighty God by my side. just wasting our time. This is the foolishness that brought us thus far. Hallelujah. I don't like dancing. I don't know how to dance. The Bible said to whom much is given, much is given. Even if all I do is this way, God knows is a is my widow's might and with all my heart. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Some of you, some of you, you know what you did after you took one bottle of beer when you were in the world. So we just have two minutes, Sam. In two minutes, I want us to share this with Two minutes. Two minutes, quickly.
service you are frowning and acting as though it's not God that you came to meet again. Make it a disposition, not just an emotional thing that happened in the night. The third key, very quickly, that provokes restoration in the life of a man is sacrifice. Key number three, sacrifice. Let me tie it quickly so that we can pray. Sacrifice, First Kings 17 from verse 7. Verse first, one to one to six. First Kings seventeen. We we'll read. Um, or if we do not have time, seventeen. And it came to pass after a while. He said that the brook dried up because there had not been rain. Read on. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, go down to Zarephath. Which belonged to Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow to sustain you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water. Number one, she's a widow. Number two, trying to gather sticks. Obviously, Elisha knew that it was a time of famine. Are we together now? It will look as though Elijah just came to help himself. But a woman is about to receive breakthrough. A woman is about to receive. Only God knows what happened. A widow meant that she lost her husband. And several other things would have left her life. And then, that I may drink, verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. 
she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Hear what the prophet says. And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Make that sacrifice. I know that it is not convenient for you, but I'm standing here representing God to step into your life and command restoration, breakthrough. But I'm demanding something from you. In this case, that which is valuable to you now. Make me kick first. Bring it unto me and afterwards you will make for you and your son. Listen. I wish, I wish that what I were saying would just happen without sacrifice. Restoration will cost you. You will have to provoke your faith. A seed is not just money. A seed is a sacrifice of something that costs you. It's a proof that you love God. Whenever what you have is about to finish, there is a system to refill it again. In this case, he demanded sacrifice of her. Listen, a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit automatically brings whoever is doing it into a covenant with God. Psalm 50 verse 5, he says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life, and then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people, and there was nothing. And then... Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You would even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread, his lunchbox, and took it to Jesus. And said, this is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, fine. I thought Jesus had bad. So, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, that's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience logs you today so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak tomorrow. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit. Sacrifice. A few minutes ago you were shouting and now Koinonia is quiet. Why? Because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow. If you want to be great, listen to me. If you want to defy the limitation that comes with this system, get used to this language. Sacrifice. You will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and still rise. The lighter you are, the higher you fly. Are we together? Sacrifice. Praise can be a sacrifice. Your seed can be a sacrifice. Your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion 
The lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left. Only one ear and two legs. That was all that was left. Yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb. What will you do with one ear and two legs? Eating the intestines, eating all of this. But in the realm of the spirit, it is not what left you that is the issue. It is what you have left. What you have left is a sign that God is still interested in restoration. That's why everything did not go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting. Oh God, this one left me. A relationship left you but your health is still with you. That health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship. Your job left you, but your praise did not leave you. That praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job. Are you getting the, the way this thing works? There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. You had a miscarriage and you are crying and say, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad, but by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice, someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest though and gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they cross over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshiped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right, 
all of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places. But let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach. But can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all the praise. I lost my job. Lost my wife. Lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that would bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. Ah, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will he come back? Job said, don't he slay me. I have lost my health, but I've not lost my voice. Don't he slay me. Yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and Ko were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job kept listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, Well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, This is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration, engaging the prophetic. Specifically, prophetic utterances. Let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight. Isaiah 42, verse 22. Please give it to us, media. Isaiah 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. All of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non-deliverate, for a spoil, and there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. For you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic, either as an operation of the word of God, or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an amplified. 
I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember, when that man of God spoke to me, that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me breakthrough, I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant, upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyedipo. So there is it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen, and anybody and anything that came out of Abraham. A sad story later happened, and then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God had the voice of the young lad. A child is crying, the mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you, it's not God's concern whether it was a mystic or not, he is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember, the last scripture. Second Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7, just two scriptures. Second Kings, chapter 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow was not something God revealed to the prophet and said, that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date when that land will be delivered. Listen, this is not revelation. It didn't say God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady, who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean, he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, 
I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband dead, her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute, bring down that coffee. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Listen, you are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say, God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21, I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you will prosper me, but this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea. That brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen, please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happen in Koinonia. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone or question one. And then comes and a word comes and result comes out and he's in 4.8. Oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. The same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, he can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The word of God. Can God cure that sickness? Yes, he can. I repeat, yes, he can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem. God can still turn it around. God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress.
there is time for people call back to us. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. How is it rejoice not over me, my enemies? Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life around. Turn your life around. Apostle, I was pregnant. Now I'm seated here and my baby cannot even move his dead. Just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes. I believe God. I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation. He will always be alive. The Lord will perfect that concerning. jobs are finished. A job is not with any government. A job is in the word of God. Listen to me. Don't cry. No. Stop that tears. It's a weep not when the book is open. Tears will stop. God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. The God of heaven is able to restore. And let me tell you something. God can restore fast. He can restore fast. 430 years in captivity. One night, God said, that's all. When God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to leave David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I, he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If 
if you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. I've lost my joy, can come back. I've lost my peace, can come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch me wherever he is. for a few minutes, it will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We are going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you, please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call. God is giving me to walk around like a gaze, like a man is going against the clock. And this is someone's destiny, literally. Literally, someone's destiny. God is restoring something to someone. It's an instruction that God is giving. I'm turning things around. Restoring. Hold on, please. Not everybody. There are 
a few people as I've done this now. The Lord is asking me to do it three more times. As I do this three more times, if this, God will restore people. But it's not everybody that is using this prophetic act to restore. If you belong to that category as I'm turning the third time, that anointing, that grace, when it hits you, just know that God is restoring you. Just know that God is restoring you. Change 
for your business. Then it crashed. Now God sends a helper. He's giving you 500,000. Instead of receiving it, he's reminding you of yesterday's failure. And you are afraid. You are afraid of embracing your future because you think it will look like your past. In the name of Jesus Christ, I once again separate you from your past. asking me to pray for people who nothing is working in their lives. Listen, this is a very serious prayer. I want you to believe this. There are people here as they are standing. Believe me when I say nothing is working. There are some, some aspects are working. We are still coming there. But the Lord is asking me to address issues. Some of you as you are standing here, inside and outside, online, if you will be honest with yourself, nothing is working. From marriage to finance to job to academics to life to health, everything is down. I want to pray for you. Everyone lift your hands. The truth is, you, you won't know is the prayer that will tell you. Because you may think things are working. I want to pray for you. I'm talking about nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State. Yes. Where are you from? Ondo, Ondo State. Ondo is what? This one I'm saying, Akure or Ondo. That's what you are coming from Akure. Because I'm seeing a car. And that's where you are coming from. Yes. Where are you coming from now? I'm that's what I'm saying. The Lord is going to change your life totally right now. Who is Lekon? Listen, just one thought. 
touch from the Lord to change your story with your hands. Lay come. Overflow. He's in the overflow. Where are you? Please stand up, my brothers. Stand up. What's your name? Lekon, sir. From where? Ekiti State, sir. Stand here. Your life is about to change. Look at him, sir. The Lord will do you a miracle. This lady wearing this, this lime thing, God is not done with you. I've seen an angel pouring oil on her. This one's standing. Huh? Help her. God is not done. I'll come to you shortly. We're going to do this very fast. Hopefully before, by the grace of God, between now and the end of the day, we'll convert one of the miracle service to a vigil. It's not just prayer. By God's grace, I will trust God for grace to prophesy upon our lives. I will go section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are naked. Augustus, yes, Augustus, or Augustus, something that has been Augustus, Augustus, or something. Augustus, I'm hearing like Augustus, please. We have to finish fast because we have to pray for the city. Augustus, change the story. Now, Jesus, something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you something, Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around, it's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. One. She's my sister too. This is your sister. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Sir. Is that true? Yes, Where sir. is she? She's in Canada. She's in Canada. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. You are a sincere person. Now what do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you. So that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes. Is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. August. August. That's what correct, stand up. That's what they correct, told me. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because you people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. They need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You are a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the message. 
shouting there. Let it burn now. I lay my hands upon the Ugechuku. Ugechuku or Ugechuku or something. In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. To look at this brother very well, know his face because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Obochuku or Obochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand, your miracle has come. Jesus, stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with the times in Kathy. Federal Medical Center. Yes, get I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been there. I was together in your program uh, in soup. Two days program you came at Kev. Oh, you were there at the, at yes, the meeting. Two, four, seven, you were part of the committee people yeah, there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. Name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace, I activate your spirit, man, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up, come. Lift your hands, let him go now. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? Kemi State. I'm going to pray for you. He said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. The power of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Christ, by the power of the Holy 
Spirit. There is somebody you are from Zuru. Zuru is in Kevin. Zuru Shabalaka Tabalaka. You are from where? Why are you here? should come now. Two years, two years. Two years, where is the person? Come. Call the person's name now. Huh? No children, two years. No children, we are going to pray. She's not here. This is your son. This is one here in the Okay, you're standing for them. Mama, why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren? Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now, she will come back and testify here with a child? I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You Jesus. believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Isa. Adama. Adama. Isa. The name of Jesus become pregnant. Amen. Mama does it. 
is over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband. Yes. We were from Lado State. We live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. In Aike, she made it. Yeah, no, Kano. We have to pray for him. Because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. He may not tell me. But this is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. Diabetes, fibroid, and, um, and, and ulcer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fibroid from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ, someone, I'm seeing this Christ. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. Lift your hands. Before we pray for the sick, I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. Before we start praying for the sick, inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone, at the count of three, I want you to shout, Jesus. One. One lady here, don't be 
embarrassed. You used to see physical rings on your hand. Physical rings, then it will disappear. Who is that? There's someone here like that. Please, quickly, let me pray for you. Don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for you. The Lord just gave me a revelation. Sometimes you look at your hand and you see, you think it's a vision, rings, like ring on your hand. You started seeing it in your dreams, but now, physically, sometimes you see it. Whether the person is inside or outside, except if they are under the anointing. But please, I would like to pray for that person as we pray for the sick. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It's a very serious thing I need to pray for you. This, this madam, come, this lady, the lady wearing lime, come. Witchcraft comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a small child within the ages of maybe 1 to 11. Now as I'm praying, the power of God is going to come upon that child. And the child will start manifesting. I'm seeing, this is, this is some demonic, diabolic thing. I'm not saying the child is bad. I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me. Father, wherever this child is, I pray for our children now. Whether it is an initiation, whether it is anything occultic, and I decree and declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. I command those devils to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those devils to live now. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing. In the realm of the spirit, there are so many things God is doing. There is a brother, the power of God is going to come on him now, overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to, and the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. The fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point now. While we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows. Those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. Um, I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please, I don't do these things to disgrace people. Gentleman here, um, you are thoroughly 
addicted to taking, you know, you always hear me say that thing. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke, um, some of these funny things, you are here and you are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside or inside. Please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people, but there is a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit to speak in, please. That gentleman, I want you to come out here and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop no matter what you do. That's what you spend your little money on. And this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate it. Hallelujah. Listen, look at me. Jesus said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophesy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you, are, if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia. Apostle, does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. still coming. Let's give them one more minute. Since God is already talking to them now, let's just take advantage of the anointing here. Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I'm your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody took, got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says, for this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. That this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it and all of that. Look at me. I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain 
Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now, listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say, forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of, of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and it destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We forward it to the, um, the prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we are helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is no body, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. somebody outside. I may not ask you to come. You stole a phone on Thursday. It's still with you. Go and return it after this service. Go and return that phone. You love God, but stealing a phone to sell it and causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I've not touched you, just let me know and I'll lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that devil to leave you. I curse. Oh, you are standing here for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. And hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say amen. I pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let there be a dissociation between you and them. Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman. Bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. Hold my hands. You need guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is still in the call, we cause it now. Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, self time in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking body, I want you to come Those who are seeking body, overflow one, two, three, inside.
You see why we pray for people? It has pleased the Lord to use us to bring the healing power of God to people. And we're very happy. We'll continue to do it. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it. Now, please look up. We're going to do two things very quickly. Um, overflow one, you can go to your projector stand. Overflow two, your projector stand. Overflow three and every other one, four. Just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and um, we're going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Jimmy will be outside overflow one. Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Femi overflow one. He's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you'll go to overflow two um, together with Mike. Mike, you follow him, overflow two. Overflow three, Benga, and promise. Two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We declare and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you will help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. Please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone, we are constrained by time. And um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith, believing, believing. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. They will still have more, please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of one. Shabbat Now arise, oh Lord, will you come to your rest in place? Let the arms of your mind, and then we will rejoice as we come. 
Signed unto death by reason of this prayer, they are delivered from death. Those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer, they are declared a success. Lord, turn around age long captivities. You declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. Hear the word of restoration. I prophesy. Let it come back to life now. I prophesy. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every door that is supposed to have opened up to you, and we don't know why it has refused to open till now. In the name of Jesus, at this June miracle service, I swing those doors open for you. I swing.
sweep those doors open for you. I sweep those doors open for you. For those who are asking God for direction for the next level, beginning from tonight, receive encounters that give you direction. Those outside, make sure you are connecting. Receive encounters that give you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. Every gift that is not yet speaking. Every grace that is, is still dormant within you. Whether spiritual gifts or physical gifts. I decree and declare right now. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I decree and declare life to your gift, life to your ability. In the name of Jesus Christ. you are not walking in spiritual gifts Paul said I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy something is coming upon you now I decree and declare all nine gifts of the spirit revealed in scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three oh God according to the faith of your people let there be a distribution right now one Two, three, take it right now. 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 Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards these gifts in the name of Jesus. Many people are going to break cycles. You know. There is a way a man is going through seasons. You are laboring in the world, but there's no manifestation yet. But there is a way you step into a season. You know that I've left this realm forever in every wise. I kept telling him that I've been perceiving, you know, I was just joking it, especially for our brothers. I was telling him, I said, I said, my people will be blessed this year. I was telling him last year, I said, no, this year people are going to push through things by the spirit. So for me, when the word came, I, I jumped and I celebrated it first for myself and prayed it for the house. Triumphant processions. Triumphant processions. Triumphant processions. Are we together? When Jesus called Lazarus, he didn't come out in secret. He came out before everybody. That was a triumphant procession. Pastor Alpha said something very powerful. There is no triumph when there is no challenge standing before you. Are we together now? The idea of triumph already gives you the attitude of a warrior. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Which should already be descriptive of the character and the nature of the year. That the year will demand certain levels of warfare certain levels of contentions forces of darkness you once were afraid of standing to confront by an unveiling of strategies you now will be equipped to go and fight them when Saul gave David his armory David said no no I'm not used to fighting with this God did not train me with this weapon I have my weapons and the Bible says the weapons of our warfare it says they are not man-made they are not fleshly they are not carnal but mighty through God he says for the pulling down of strongholds casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ then it says bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ say amen so this year you will command victory after victory after victory after victory in the name of Jesus Christ yeah. 
what is the basis of our confidence you don't make boastful statements like this in the presence of situations and circumstances i hope you know that the giants that stand before people are real understand this obstacles are real challenges are real the economic turmoil that is lashing on people is real are we together poverty is real terrorism is real death is real you see all these things plaguing the nations of the earth so what would give a people such confidence to come out and boldly speak before the world at the beginning of a year that has been predicted using all kinds of indices that is not a good year then you dare say it is your year of triumph first john 5 verse 4 let's look at two or three scriptures very quickly what is the basis of our confidence why do we make all these boasts when we have not even gone into the year physically first john 5 verse 4 media please help us he said for whatsoever is born of god whatsoever is what born of god whatsoever is born of god not whosoever whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith whatsoever so if i am born of god i qualify to make that boast that even in the midst of turmoil especially economic turmoil i can dare to say that i will thrive I will prosper and I will triumph whatsoever is born of God this is the first basis upon which we can make such an audacious claim everyone shout it say I am born of God I, born of God. I know it sounds simple but I like you to shout it I am born of God, I am born of God. and so I overcome To be born of God is a very serious thing. I know that religious people have made it look like um, I sat down here a few minutes before coming up and I watched the way Ejimi was taking care of his daughter. The daughter would want to sit on his lap. The daughter would want to run around and he would draw her. When he was coming to celebrate January, she's October, but she was part of those who caught that cake because she was born of the celebrant are you together now and so while he's going for as long as she kept identifying herself as his daughter if another baby ran and came around ushers would hold her and say no no go back but because she was his daughter she had that access the birthday has nothing to do with her but she stood in front so the bible says whosoever is born of god must join him in everything whosoever is born of god overcometh the world listen this is how to defeat darkness this world is a legal realm dominion is not is not jacking yourself you must stand upon keys demons listen they are obedient nobody breaks ranks the realm of the spirit is a legal system you overcome by presenting truths you don't overcome by wishing when satan came to jesus he said it is written and satan said i can't deny it both god and demons there is a rule of engagement the same way you fight war and even among terrorists they know that they are here to kill men when they see women and children they leave them they respect the rule of engagement there is a rule of engagement in the realm of the spirit whatsoever is born of god if my body is born of God it overcomes sickness if my finances are born of God it must overcome recession are we together now if I am born of God I must be able to overcome every charm 
every enchantment I can't stop them from gathering I don't even know whether or not they are gathering but one thing I know is the Bible already gave me expo that the whole world lies in wickedness so, so it is not unthinkable to imagine somebody is planning only God knows how many demons are planning plane crashes for me this year car accident maybe even after this service I can join them in the discussion because it makes no difference to me I am born of God believe me I'm not making a boastful statement I don't need to say avoid that talk uh -uh. I'm not I'm not running away maybe because I don't want to hear bad news that's not what I'm saying I'm saying it, it makes no difference it's like a child saying I will beat you and then he's oh yeah beat me that's what I can do with the devil the realm of the spirit has no confusion whatsoever it's a legal system you don't win by mistake and you don't lose by mistake everything is done through laws intentionally is God helping us tonight so the first basis of our confidence is that we are born of God everyone say I'm born of God what is the basis of our confidence John chapter 1 verse 5 we still have a problem there John chapter 1 verse 5 sorry about the um, I'm sure that may also affect those outside if so please we're sorry I'm sure they will be back Asap. John 1 verse 5 John chapter 1 verse 5 if you have it in your Bible please I'd like you to join me and read it John 1 verse 5 popular scripture ready read and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not my Bible says overcame it not and the light this is the second basis listen listen please look up the second basis the platform upon which we can dare say it's a year of triumph is that we have been given an understanding from the Word of God that darkness only remains darkness for as long as there is no light are we together now when you off this light this entire auditorium becomes dark but the moment the light comes on the darkness leaves so the departure of darkness is at the appearance of genuine light genuine light are we together now the second basis of our confidence is that all the works of satan are considered darkness and god and all he communicates is called light and the bible says the light shines the light shines the light shines so that god through his light is empowering us this year so that we can be able to walk through darkness so for you it does not matter whether it will light or dark because you are light yourself and you are carrying light so in case it were darkness as soon as you step in the rules change for you they have to change for you if i enter a dark room and i do not have light anything can happen i can march on a bottle i can injure myself confusion is that true but now somebody else will enter that dark room with his own light the room did not give him light but he forced the room to be illuminated through his light and he can organize himself are we together now so the bible says the light shines in darkness listen it is costly to live in today's world in ignorance costly to live in today's world in ignorance any kind of ignorance will not work well for us this year so the light shines in darkness that is the basis of our victory what should I expect this year this year of triumph what should I expect this year number one I'm being careful to say it 
everyone who does not trust in the name of the Lord or everyone who does not live by the principles of the kingdom this will be a terrible year for them this is the truth I'm trying to be as nice as I can sound but this is this is the mildest way of communicating it anyone who is not born of God comma and anyone who though born of God is not equipped with light will not have a very funny year that's the truth brothers and sisters I will not lie to you if you are waiting for government now I love the government we are responsible people as a ministry the government of nations and policies to change so that you will smile it means you will cry from January to December are we together now we are tapping into the realities of another system to thrive and live are you hearing what I'm saying now I like the way living faith puts it they say my case is different very powerful statement not our case my case the rules are different for me are we together we were we were coming in from Uyo yesterday we had a beautiful time by the way I'm sure there are people following us Uyo is a lovely place you want to see how heaven looks like you can go to Uyo yeah it truly really is a beautiful place hallelujah we were rushing to come and catch the flight and everything was over they were about to lift that I mean we were going to miss the flight but because the person who invited us had influence with the airport authorities they caused the entire plane to be grounded until we came you see that I'm just giving you an example of how a man's case can be different the rules you read the rules and regulation you read on your manual is for the general public the same way listen on Saturday there is no banking on Sunday there is no banking but the doors of banks open every day it depends on who is talking there are men who if they want to withdraw now they open the bank and the manager comes he said I hope I'm not inconveniencing him inconveniencing me everyone shout my case is different shout it again my case is different listen this is the year every time you hear them say it can't be done just know they are speaking to the general public the Bible says you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood you, you have to believe this don't just laugh listen it's a mentality I have worked with for years I never generalize my life there is nothing general about me it's, it's not some boastful statement it's the truth I expect things to be different when I come it's my approach so I'm very interested in what people say cannot be done because I like to see how that thing will treat me oh hallelujah I pray that you have a victor's mindset this year all this generalizing ourselves oh that's how it happens no there are always exemptions there, there, have, there is no rule that has been applicable to everybody there are always exemptions are we together men engage secrets from Genesis to Revelation and change keys change rules kings who vowed that they could not see people saw certain women they did things listen 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 brothers and sisters everybody's explanation is his experience so people write books based on their experience they teach based on their experience they say in 40 years it has never happened that a young man within this and that age range becomes successful based on this GDP and A and B and C if you get a job today receiving 40,000 by our estimate in 10 years you will now be able to build a house when you hear those talk honor them but turn and say no way uh, no 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 it's not me hallelujah yeah. believe me I live my life as if there is no such thing as recession 
I believe it by my solidarity to a nation at a corporate level but I absolutely do not be it is not it doesn't make sense koinonia is rising this year as if as if his charm I all gave you to put in your pocket that's how we will rise no 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 that's what I saw God has made me a pastor over the ministry so I know what I saw I will sympathize with any other person who has seen differently but the Bible says Joshua and Caleb were of another spirit 12 spies 12 spies went to spy a land perspective 10 of them saw the giants six fingers six toes they will shake themselves as if they are going to squeeze one another and the, the ten were seeing themselves in, in the midst of those hands being squeezed whereas Joshua and Caleb said my God look at abundance in this land they ran back and said the ten said we were like grasshoppers Joshua and Caleb said don't say we say I saw them he said let us go up at once for we are well able when Joshua was distributing and allocating land in the book of Joshua Caleb came to him and said when I was 40 years Moses said because of my courage you will give me this land now give me this mountain although I am 40 about 45 years older my strength is still there I can take on those giants Come on now. everybody was looking at the end of the reign of Israel another man was looking at an opportunity for a tax-free life and a free wife are we together David came and said look I can't go through all this hustle what will be done for the person who kills Goliath they say his family will be exempted from tax he will marry the king's daughter that's why when he was dancing before God and his wife turned he said I'm dancing before God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me hallelujah thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph causes us always to triumph what do we expect this year a year of great victory and supernatural achievement write it down a year of great victory great victory and supernatural achievement don't go around insulting people but don't listen to all this nonsense you hear around believe me when i tell you this it's a year of great victory and supernatural achievement what do we expect this year uncommon results uncommon results in every area spiritually financially career-wise uncommon results what do we expect this year total dominion and mastery over the forces of darkness and the issues of life what do we expect this year i repeat total dominion and mastery over the forces of darkness and the issues of life there are real issues in life there are real forces but that we sustain an ability to command total dominion and mastery I wrote something down here that I want to read this was even during my retreat I said our goal as a ministry don't write just listen our goal as a ministry for 2017 is to lead God's people and as many others into greater levels of intimacy with God comma revival transformation signs and wonders prosperity kingdom influence and total dominion God's people will experience the dominion power of light over darkness that's what I wrote there the dominion power you see how cheap darkness is when you hold light when you do not hold light you don't make boast when you are driving and your headlamp offs you drive like a learner or park the car but as soon as you can see a mechanic who will buy a hundred or 250 naira bulb and just put it 
just because a car that you bought four million or five million now has a headlamp of less than two thousand spoiled and that entire car becomes inefficient you bought a car over five million and the head the the, the bulb right that gives light that is less than ten thousand naira because that that headlight spoils you can't drive again you park your beautiful car and you can do nothing about it but just a young mechanic who comes buys that bulb from a shop your car can buy the shop but you carry the light and just fix it back and you can speed in the night as if it's the afternoon someone will run this year listen I got a powerful revelation about speed during my retreat and the Lord told me if you see somebody driving on a speed lane slow he's either a learner or the car is not working well is that true so the concept of delay or slow movement is totally a function of darkness let me tell you something every driver knows when the road is clear there is no car and there is light what do you do there's no time for moving around and nonsense and wasting time you you hurry up that's how many of us the road will be clear light will clear off every devil standing that way hallelujah some of us it's not even you will even need to change the vehicle completely because what you have been moving with you you can't sit inside a wheelbarrow and you want to arrive lagos that's what the economy of the world is trying to give you their theories will make you successful when you are 70 years old listen you cannot live in today's world with the suggestions men are giving and ever rise let me speak just economically speaking do you know in nigeria every family has at least two or three people now who are jobless they have been retrenched they've been downsized and they are waiting out of eight people one person got a job of forty thousand, and everybody saying praise the lord what does that mean to that salary as soon as you tight it finishes immediately so how do you build a house how do you buy a car how do you get married how do you sow into the work of god you see what satan wants to rob you So that you are 50 years and you are still staying in your parents house you are coming to koinonia but you are coming from their house at 50 and they look at you and say what is this but my case is different it truly is different hallelujah how will this be achieved we are going to pray seeing then that god has released the word his word is his bond his word is his commitment throughout this year i wrote something down you may just want to listen the primary tool that will be used to achieve this is the word of god but more specifically a thorough revelation of the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom that are responsible for the desired results the primary tool that will be used to achieve this is the word of god comma but more specifically a thorough revelation of the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom that are responsible for the desired results so there is your desire versus the mystery that is responsible for actualizing it are we together please come help me with this bottle everyone please look at this my desire is to drink water i give one of these little ones this bottle they may be thirsty but they do not know how to open it this is the year you must match your desire with the corresponding mystery that was designed to open it up to you we have desires we know what we want but what it takes to deliver the result is where the problem is so the primary tool this year 
I tell you, this year will be an unveiling of divine strategies. The mysteries that are responsible for commanding results. Now, I want to open this and I do not know. And then somebody gives me an orientation. You hold this and turn it anti-clockwise. Do you know I can hold this and turn it clockwise? And it's not opening because that's not the law. Does the water hate me? Please answer me. Does the bottle know me? It's a system. Whoever can turn it will drink the water. So I use my frustration to say anytime you see this bottle run away, it can't be opened. That's what they are preaching to you all around. Because people tried it and it did not work. And then God tells you, no, take that same bottle. And he tells you, turn it. And you turn it very easily. Very easily. And it's open. You are ready to take the water. Thanks be to God who through his mystery causes us always to triumph. So everywhere they say it can be done, God sends you there. So the next time, thank you. The next time you see yourself standing in the midst of fire, don't cry. Don't say it can be done. Ask how can it be done? How, how, how? Not it can be done. How can it be done? Are we together? God speaks to you and says, by December, you own your own house. And you sit down and calculate and say, God, I'm earning 50,000. How much is, is that good spent? You see, if you think like that, not even this year, your lifetime, you will not build. Are we together? You have to stretch your faith and believe God. The word of God. Now, let me tell you something. What is God's part in this prophecy? Write it down. This is the apex of this exhortation. What is God's commitment? Isaiah chapter 55. What is God's commitment in this prophecy? If I'm doing business with you, I have to know what my commitment is and what your commitment is. Right? So this is what God says in Isaiah 55 verse 11. Listen. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It says it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing I sent it. So God is telling you his own part that as far as I am concerned, my integrity over this prophetic word, that is your year of triumph is guaranteed. My word will not return back. I will not bring you at the beginning of the year and mock you. God is too big to mock you. He's too big to play with you. Play games with your mind. No. So shall my word be. One more scripture. Because from the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. Are we together? Jeremiah 1 verse 12. Jeremiah 1 verse 12. Amplified says, For I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. So who is the performer? Who is the performer? Write it down. That's his part. The part of God is the performer. The one who forces that word to come to pass. He said it. He said it to us as a family of faith. That it is our year of triumph. And so we have believed him. His own part is to perform it. Make good his bond. Are we together now? So what is your own part? Because usually this is where the equation fails. I want you to pay attention. Take what I'm about to tell you as prophetic instructions. Eight instructions God gave me during our retreat. Eight instructions. And he said, if you keep this and tell my people to keep this, it will truly be a year of triumph. So please take very seriously these eight instructions. Bishop Oyedeko said... Um, 
those who drive are taught by all kinds of people you call them coaches and drivers and, and all of that but those who fly planes those who train those who fly planes they call them instructors you fly a plane based on instructions there's no emotions to it is exact you can time the landing of a plane with the fraction of a second are we together now i can't guarantee that if i ask you to drive from here to your house you may arrive in 10 minutes but when you are in the air i can time that you are landing 707 and 707 on the dot the tire is touching the ground because of instructions instructions give you accuracy 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 instructions do, doesn't leave discretion do this and this will happen don't do this and you will not suit this instruction number one what is my part what is my part in partnership with god to make this year a year of triumph second chronicles 2020 that's instruction number one believe in the lord and believe in his prophets write it down that's the first instruction Believe in the Lord and believe in his prophets. Those who disregard prophetic instructions will hear it bad this year. Arrogant people who think when the word of God comes from a man of God, it's a word they join all these, these junk journalists that write nonsense about every man of God. To mean when a man of God speaks, he's just ranting. No, God has always used the instrumentality of vessels to speak his purposes to people believe in the lord your god what does it do to you establishment believe in his prophets what does it do to you prosperity so the first instruction from god if we are to experience a year of triumph is that we must believe in the lord by the way you are, if you are not born again here by the time i make the altar call please i want you to run because that's where it starts from believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established then he said believe his prophets to believe his prophets doesn't mean to agree with them take them as true take what they are speaking as the word from god for as long as that word bears witness with your spirit the holy ghost confirming it then you take it and act upon it accordingly you're going to be receiving instructions here you're going to be receiving principles here be childlike be childlike and receive it and you will be surprised the kingdom is for children he said let the little children come to me right and do not forbid them for for such is the kingdom of heaven except you become like one of these little ones the bible says you cannot enter you can't experience the kingdom unnecessary big manism and pride is what will cause people to weep and languish believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe in his prophets so shall ye prosper so this is not the year to come for koinonia now that does not mean you should throw your brains away please let's balance it are you getting what i'm saying believing a man of god does not mean the person says remove one shoe put it on your head and walk around uh -uh. remember the holy ghost is in you are we together now the holy ghost is in you bearing witness with everything that is being spoken so i say to believe a man of god with respect to his walking with god paul said follow me as i follow after christ meaning if i am not following christ don't follow me are you getting the idea now because many people have been indoctrinated wrongly with this issue of believing prophets they believe what you believe what they taught you about money and you are broke because what they said was a lie so don't just believe nonsense and say this is what i've said uh, believe provided the man has a track record of working with god that's what qualifies him to be able to speak with you so that somebody does not carry i'm saying it for the sake of the thousands online so that one pastor does not carry this and go and harass his members and say even apostle joshua selman said this now all of you go and bring ten ten thousand naira and give me the bible says believe me that's not what i'm saying that's manipulation and witchcraft hallelujah 
you follow a man of God as he follows after Christ so you don't just follow him blindly you check in front of him to see who he's following if he's following another strange spirit you turn around are we together instruction number two this 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 is the, my notebook for the retreat I, I came with it directly so that I'll read it because it came with fire from the throne and it's good to read it as it came number two the second instruction the second key your own role is that you must cultivate a passion a passion to thoroughly understand the principles of the kingdom you must cultivate a passion for understanding an appetite for understanding fight your areas of ignorance like a cancer this year no assumptions no assumptions every gray area in your life deal with it ruthlessly i'm not getting this thing for five years i've been acting like i know it i sit down at the feet of the master and i learn how this thing works cultivate a passion for understanding the bible says they are life to those who find them to find them means you have to search for them and the bible tells us how proverbs 18 verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself that talks of focus 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 one leg here trying to read one book you read one page and then you come back after five months the year will end like it did last year and every other year you must give it your attention do you know the reason why many people never learn we are too distracted now please don't misunderstand me but i have to say this you have to be careful with the internet this year say amen, amen. number two you have to be careful with your phone this year your phone may be the enemy that will stop you from triumphing you have to be careful some of these things that distract us be careful with unnecessary hilarious movies you are watching nigerian film you have 10 cds say i must finish it you set a goal to finish those films and then you are not doing anything with your life you must passionately pursue understanding it takes time it takes time you will need to study you will need to buy books you will need to listen to teachings again and again don't just say I listen to it again mm -mm. again and again there are some of my own teachings I've listened to one tape over 500 times believe me when I tell you this one just one koinonia teaching over 500 times God is my witness I'm not exaggerating there are other messages I've listened to one tape I will tell you almost more than a thousand times I'm not exaggerating You have to be passionate except you want to behave like a herbalist this year but if you want a predictable result be ready to spend time notice I didn't say in knowledge most of us are already aware you need understanding to know how to engage that principle is God helping us instruction number three let's hurry up what is your part number three you must be willing to be obedient and consistent write it down the third key God gave me for myself and for us two scriptures please Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2 and then James 1 25 Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2 and then James 1 25 the willingness to obey and to obey consistently you don't tithe in January and then the next time you come in October you don't get results that way you don't pray today and then sometime in May you just say let me go for prayer band meeting that's when you remember that you have not been praying you, there must be consistency Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt do what hearken diligently 
unto the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day listen when you observe and do them then the following will happen that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings so they are there but they will not come to you automatically shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord everybody say obedience say consistency yeah you don't do devotion today and then after two weeks you now kneel down and repent and just read two chapters and kneel down and repent again March you 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 change all these games this is the year you have to be serious please prophesy to yourself say I'll be serious even with the house of God there are people who are not serious you come for koinonia now and then you sit down later you say you are busy what are you busy doing you are busy suffering because nothing is working I must be consistent do you know no matter how little your efforts are if you are consistent you will get more results than somebody who comes up with an have you seen people who come up with elephant projects they just come out of one three-day fasting and say today i will read five books per week ten chapters per day i will pray three hours and while they are saying it, someone is watching in two weeks you will say bros sorry oh i i remember you making that statement don't come up with elephant projects elephant projects is why people are not consistent like now most of you had retreat from december to now the fire is still hot so you are making statements that don't make sense god is saying calm down i said god just allow me or leave me run the way i want to run and you won't even reach february this year i must pay the school fees of 10 students god is saying be careful just start with say, god leave me it's my heart now the third person is already asking you and you are saying please don't talk to me listen i want to show you why people are not consistent they are not consistent because they are, they are not they don't set goals that are reasonable i'm going to be saving hundred hundred thousand per month mm -mm. apostle has said we should save how much is your salary your salary is thirty thousand how are you going to save hundred thousand are you a thief you see it's not realistic i'm not saying don't plan but you, you have to take sensible steps it's like a Jewish child saying i must drive now that's an ambitious goal but it's not realistic so please go back and edit your plans to be reasonable and invite the holy spirit to help you this year i must be a millionaire in dollars respect money and plan well don't be a fool and do stupid things you know I, I'm, I'm saying this as a warning I'm speaking to so many people you have to be wise I'm showing you why number one we are not obedient because you'll be frustrated you will even tight again take your growth in sensible logical steps Lord I will obey you I can dedicate one hour praying and I'll give my heart to it the day God grants me grace I will use that whole day to stretch don't say me and eight hours Lord if I don't pray eight hours kill me that's what you said during your retreat you would have been dead from 2nd of January because the only time you prayed eight hours was your retreat you have not even prayed one hour since that time don't make foolish statements emotionally are you getting my point now be careful Lord if I miss coin only one day this year break my leg Dude, we say all kinds of things that don't make sense of course God is merciful so he just looks at us like a child talking to the father but you have to be wise that's why people cannot obey they yoke themselves with instructions that are too hard to obey at the moment I must give apostle a seed every every Friday a Jimmy a seed every Friday my hatred a seed every Friday Lord that's my covenant with you be careful God didn't ask you You're, you are you will get there one day but your salary is five thousand how do you do that Praise the Lord. Are we together? So obedience and consistency. James chapter 1 verse 25. Please quickly. James 1 25. Let's hurry up. 
James 1 25 look up please while I read but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty the Bible says and continueth continueth not just that he looked at it once he continueth therein he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word what is his reward this man shall be blessed in his deed consistency will produce results consistency will produce results don't commit yourself to anything you know you cannot continue ask questions ask the Holy Spirit to help you number instruction number four you must maintain a robust prayer life write it down a robust prayer life a healthy fiery prayer life the bible says and the fire upon the altar it shall burn day and night listen this is a year when there are forces of darkness the arsenals of hell are out to eat and spew out anybody it can find there's no room for carelessness are we together now why do we need to pray to maintain our relationship and our contact with God why do we need to pray to maintain our discernment why do we need to pray to command things to be why do we need to pray to challenge the forces that be to keep way to give way you must pray there are there are wicked spirits you can only imagine how many devils of darkness plan to destabilize koinonia destabilize our lives to make sure that people don't come to misrepresent us you've got to pray listen let me tell you something if you're a pastor here let me teach you a very big secret I thank God for koinonia koinonia has a robust prayer department many of you are part of it and I thank God for the leaders great guys and so many people this is a ministry of prayer there are prayer giants here but nobody's prayer for me can substitute for my personal prayer life are you hearing what I'm saying there are many lazy pastors and I'm challenging us there are many lazy church members I know they will pray for me where are you going koinonia prayer band oh please pray for us so you see that attitude this year will not go well because there are instructions you must hear by yourself nobody can hear it for you there are many lazy men of God who don't pray they say we have prayer warriors praying for me all around some of you even sow seeds to the men praying and say please this is just a small seed to buy orange juice while you pray it will not substitute your spiritual laziness history is full of men who did not pray and the fatal disaster that happened to them let me tell you anything that affects your prayer life has truly destroyed you not will destroy you if at this point you are listening to me your prayer altar is dead you don't need a word of knowledge you are under attack just know it not from God from hell you I don't care what the excuse is you don't you don't forget to eat you don't forget to bath you don't forget to dress you don't for there's nobody working for the government who says I forgot that I'm supposed to go to work today because every time you are tired you remember salary are we together now this prayerlessness and spiritual laziness and say I'm not saying I'm not into all this I'm not the ministry type me I'm, I'm not the ministry type you must be the ministry type this year because victory is for ministry people if you are not in ministry this year forget about victory please take what I'm saying seriously say I receive grace say it inside and outside I receive grace to be on fire in the place of prayer you have to create times listen I know we are all busy don't get me wrong I'm a very busy person most there are many people here who are working some are students there are people all around if you are waiting until it's comfortable you will never be consistent you have to you understand your life come up with a program I'm a night person 
I'm like a dog in the night because my daytime is busy. People will not even allow me to concentrate. I can't tell you I'll pray effectively in the day. So the night time, when unbelief has reduced in the earth, people are sleeping. All the people who cause unbelief to fly like magnetic waves are sleeping. That's when we settle things. We, we, we make things be. That's, my, that's good for me. There are others, the nature of your job. If you pray like that, you will be sick. So you won't say apostle is doing it and you do it like that. There are others, what you just need is to just make sufficient contact for the day. And then one day that you have a leaf, maybe in a week, you can use that day and just settle and catch up for the week. Are we together? If you don't create a system, you will not pray. Most of us here, you can spare some time in the night, except you are lazy. You were praying in the night when you entered relationship. That prayer time now became loan time. Be careful, God is watching. You have to, you have to balance that thing and tell the brother and say, brother, I love you. But you see, from this to this is a time for prayer. We can readjust it, but you can't just say, uh -uh, yeah, well, even God knows that we're in love. Be careful. Demons don't know you are in love. And that's where the issue is. Because these are the little things. Please don't just laugh. Listen carefully. Most of us, our night times are for recreation, which is okay. Those of us in relationships, you are catching up time, you know, discussing, which is wonderful. I encourage it. But, but, I encourage it only if your prayer life will not suffer. If you are in love at the expense of your prayer life, you are dying. Say amen. amen. Number, number five. What is the third instruction from God to us? Totally the fifth instruction, I'm sorry. Totally reject fear and negative reports. Let me dwell for a few minutes here. This one came strong in my spirit. The fifth instruction to see the outstretched arm of God this year. You must totally reject fear slash negative reports. Media, three scriptures, please give it to us quickly. Isaiah 8 verse 12. Of course, you know already that fear is a spirit. Don't turn there, just write it. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, power, and what? Fear is a spirit. You must challenge it. Do you know, I'm not against watching CNN, BBC, and all the stations and reading the newspapers and all of that. But you have to be careful are we together now any report that violates your convictions you can read it just for entertainment but do not absorb it and add it to your convictions and start acting statistics have been released already that predict a lot of things the economic health of nations predicts that this and that is happening there's there are already predictions that there's going to be almost a 10 percent job uh what they call it downsizing thank you by the time you hear that one now you are you are afraid because they just employed you <laughs> he says say ye not a confederacy to all of them whom these people shall say a confederacy neither fear their fear that means don't say what they are saying they are saying recession don't join them to say recession don't fight them oh, let me give you a balance don't go to the office and when they say there's recession you stand up and say look in this board meeting there is no recession they will fire you that's not what i mean but i'm saying you don't accept that as a no it's not a prophetic word for you say i reject it there's no recession in my life say it again i reject it there's no recession in my life are we together the bible says neither fear their fears listen there are only about four or five fears that plague people number one the greatest is the fear of death number two is the fear of failure are we together now the fear of death the fear of failure really what else 
Number three, the fear of disappointment. Disappointment. Purpose is disappointed and all kinds of things. These are some of the fears that we have around. Our fears are finite. You can look at them and know that I can conquer them. The fear of death. How am I sure now that you, you watch on, B, on BBC and, and CNN? People are in a bus, a luxurious bus traveling. Someone sits down there. You hear about the foolish boy, that testimony that somebody gave where someone wanted to snuff a, a gun a grenade. Look, this year you must behave well. Praise God. The things I used to snuff. yourself automatically you know that brother needs deliverance i hope you know nobody will go and bust grenade and then lose your hand is that a mistake that was calculated by hell a day before they concluded tomorrow by this time this guy has lost i'm sure it's even intercession that didn't blow the guy up maybe somebody prayed for him some problems are self-inflicted you smoke snuff and you are not in your mind and they arrest you they jail you no year of triumph are we together now no year of triumph is not caused by demons we have our wheels are you hearing what i'm saying or oh, they are snuffing and you are there you did snuff but you are still going to prison some of us are so careless you know that there are thieves around you your best friend is a thief your your other friend is a smoker the other person is is goes to a herbalist the other person is is a lazy man look at and you are the, you are serious you can't have a year of triumph brothers and sisters let's not play games you have to be serious edit your association there are people you have to wave goodbye this year they say why say because it's my year of triumph totally reject fear Hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 verse 15 just write it these are scriptures since it's not projected Hebrews 2 verse 15 and deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage there is a correlation between fear and bondage every time you are afraid you are kept in bondage if you are afraid of death you will not travel to go and see your loved ones you are thinking what if I die have you not heard of people who were about to eat dinner in their house as they were just they just finished serving the meal a tractor a, a, a trailer just entered and killed all of them your confidence is not in refusing to get on the road your confidence is in the name of the Lord I shall not die but live and declare the Bible says right I said before you life and death blessing and cursing choose life I've chosen life that's why I don't smoke it's not just I chose life I cho I've chosen life that's why I don't drink hello I must say it you drink you have chosen death you smoke it's not and I don't care what it is e-cigarette um, 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 real one you are dying and another angle let me come in with another dimension gluttony is also on your way to death let me balance it are we together excessive food does something to your spirit man i'm not saying starve yourself don't get me wrong excessive food there is no champion i know who is a master at eating go and search history no champion i know you are temperate in all things balance yourself don't eat things that 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 cause trouble in your body Many people have eaten their waste to their, their, to their grave. They call it prosperity. You buy two, uh, 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 what they call it, two whole chickens, only you. Add malt, add viju, add yogurt, add chips. And you eat it and say, look, when I was poor, I suffered. Now that I'm rich, you are not enjoying. Choose life. Prophesy to yourself, say, I choose life. 
I'm not saying don't eat. They serve you a chicken, eat well, but be temperate. Be temperate. And do you know, Ejimi, the Lord shared with me a revelation during my retreat. Do you know why many people get sick from food? Because we are disobeying what the Bible says. He who does not walk is an advice. It's an advice. It's not a warning. I'm advising you. If you don't plan to walk, don't eat. Because eating without walking will do something to your health. Oh, come on. It's not, we just think God is warning us. It's an advice. Believe me, brothers and sisters. Find out from people who don't walk and eat. They don't stay healthy. I'm not a doctor, but ask the doctors among us here. You are just eating because that life works based on the principle of give and take you are not giving anything and you are receiving if you don't walk don't eat the same way they say if you drink don't drive if you don't walk don't eat try this and see how healthy you will be most people eat but don't walk mentally they are not working spiritually they are not working physically they are not working you eat by 10 you wake up by 12 you know what you are doing you are dying great leaders are healthy people very healthy people because leadership makes you very diligent great leaders are healthy people alive and agile you see someone in his 30s mid 40s or 50s and you see him breaking down he wants to call you he's raising his hand as if he's sick food brought that kind of thing you have been eating and you have not been working do you know I, I studied this thing I'm telling you I took out time to study it a professional doctor a dietitian was talking about all of these things people walk and don't eat I mean they they, 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 they walk they eat and they don't walk say I walk and that revelation came from the fact that Jesus has done everything so we should not do everything that is true but you must understand in what context it doesn't mean you lazy around and move around no sir no sir no sir Jesus did not die to produce lazy people Jesus himself said I must walk the works of him that sent me you will never become great in life being lazy I'm talking about fear but I'm saying these are some of the things that sabotage our lives and keep us in fear you are now afraid of your health oh what if they say I am this do you know if you just obey the Bible you don't need to fear death do you know why God created fasting even medically speaking medically speaking people who fast periodically are healthy your body needs to take a break from all these things you are just chunking in you buy a crate of minerals and finish it in three days. No, you fast. If you have no spiritual reason to fast, I tell you, I don't mean fast like don't eat. You can just take a day and say I'm just on food. Just to, just to make my body feel healthy. We have been trained to feel when you eat so much you are rich. No, no. No one will die here this year. In the name of Jesus Christ and none of you will kill yourselves this year in the name of Jesus Christ let's hurry up we're almost there instruction number six the sixth instruction to experience a year of triumph is be patient but persistent write it down the year of triumph is for those who will be patient impatient people who hear it this year you must be patient hebrews 6 15 galatians 6 9 please quickly be patient it says everyone read want to read and so talking of abraham after he had patiently endured did what 
after he had patiently endured i know god has spoken that it's a year of trial but you don't wait and between this week and next week you just say i don't have a testimony that's it mm -mm, be patient over your finances be patient give god time to work things out for you give favor time to come to fruition in your life impatience will destroy many people so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise galatians 6 verse 9 he says and let us not be weary don't gas out let us not be weary in well-doing why for in due season we shall reap what's the condition if we faint not so you must be persistent ask and keep asking seek and keep seeking knock and keep knocking and the door will open up to you i pray for you for grace to continue some of these things i'm sharing may not make sense now but brothers and sisters by the time you are in march and nothing has happened in your finances and you return back home and you find out there may not be food to eat then you go back to these things and you will see that i told you patience and persistence it doesn't mean the word of god is not working are we together by the time all of a sudden you find out that uh -uh, you're beginning to have abdominal pain and they now give you a report you don't like i say uh -uh, but i thought god said it's my year of trial patience by the time you come for january miracle service and then nothing happens right away patience most people don't give god a chance to manifest himself in their lives we give up on god too easily the moment you say oh god this is what i'm trusting especially when you have dreams and you have experiences that show you that god is going to help you and then physically you are not seeing it that way god told you that you will get a job by december that's what you saw that's what you had and now it's january okay lord i give you the glory i thought it was december i don't know whether i got it right or whatever that's not important i just know you will give me a job you have spoken i hold on to your word very simple instead of saying god is it that i'm, I'm hearing voices or you are the ones all those things are signs of unbelief lord i believe you but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able everybody say i still believe god prophesy to yourself i still believe god yeah the circumstances around you may not look like it but i still believe god two more and then we are done the seven key you must have clear goals and expectations write it down the seventh key to experience a year of triumph you must have clear goals and expectations psalm 37 verse 4 and then proverbs 23 18 psalms 37 verse 4 you must have clear goals and expectations i'm taking out time to be this simple tonight because i want everyone to receive it so that we can pray this word i really desire from my heart and god knows i prayed for you during my retreat and i told god i said god please let your people get strange testimonies let this word work in their lives and god told me well the ball is in everyone's court god is more than faithful but if we engage with him then you can be sure that the sky is only a starting point it says delight thyself also in the lord and he shall give you what so when you do not have desires expressed as goals god is not authorized to bless you set clear goals are we together now financial goals reasonable financial goals set clear goals career goals okay i'm trusting god to get a job this year i'm trusting god to start a business this year my laundry should start this is the budget i need two hundred thousand. lord i lift it before you you are more than able to make this happen i set a clear goal i should have by god's grace i plan to have a cash flow of two hundred thousand per month this year hundred thousand per month this year that will cover the school fees of my children cover my rent for a year i set goals i set clear goals that by the grace of god every day i should be able to read a particular you know chapters of scripture i set clear goals 
when you don't set goals you will never achieve anything proverbs 23 verse 18 proverbs 23 verse 18 it says for surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off i have an expectation for the ministry i have an expectation for my life are we together you're a businessman have expectations you're a career person have expectation oh i'm due for promotion and i believe with all my heart that this year i will be promoted to become an operations manager lord i involve you in this thank you my goal is that by the end of this year i should have finished my msc i should have finished my phd my goal this year is at least i should be able to write three or four papers of international repute this year my goal this year is that i'll be a serious student i'm on three point maybe 3.35 and my goal this year is to make five points first and second semester and to rise to a two one and then see how i can take it from there sensible goals my goal maritally speaking is to get married or to be a good wife my goal is to give birth don't just give birth set it as a goal so that you can gather the resources to manage the bible says no man intending to build a house you want to marry by june and you are wasting money in january you will not marry you set it as a goal goals give us focus are you getting what i'm saying now that way you don't waste resources there are many wasters in the body of christ wasting everything that god gives them you waste your brain you waste your resources no set goals my goal this year is to access the healing anointing god has called me into the healing ministry but i have not seen that level of healing that may be your goal and my goal this year is i want to focus on the healing ministry and trust god to access that grace so that i can become a blessing my goal this year is to sharpen the prophetic dimension god gave me i'm tired of talking to people and one out of every 20 is what comes to pass i need to sharpen my accuracy goals my goal this year i'm tired of being broke at least even if i don't become a millionaire this year let me understand the laws of wealth and abundance my goal this year in preparation for marriage is to study on motherhood study on wifehood i want to be an award-winning woman my goal this year is not to be a foolish man i've been a foolish man for many years but now i want to calm down and understand what it means to be responsible my goal this year is to move out of my parents house and get a house of my own i want to start with a self-contained i want to be responsible this year that's a goal are we together my goal this year is to stop gossiping and making trouble and design a good life for myself i'm tired of talking about people going to people's homes to disturb them and be a nuisance to them i'm ready to be serious my goal this year is to be a greater person of integrity and character i found out that i love god but maybe i'm not quite a person of integrity and character i want to work on it do you have goals you must set them are we together I challenge you to set goals please set goals they will guide you in what to do and they will help you know the things you should not be involved in oh my goal is to start ministry this year okay this is what I'm seeing this is how God is helping me my goal is to expand this year my goal is to write a book this year my goal is to do this and that my goal is to be a more effective worker in koinonia i'm tired of absenteeism i'm tired of carelessness i want to give god my best today when you set goals you authorize god i have goals my life is littered with goals at every given point in my life there's no carelessness i know what to do after this night i know what to do tomorrow my week is already prepared my month is already prepared 
the year is already prepared i'm not sitting down wishing of course you will adjust the goals eventually but you have you must have a skeletal description so nobody just comes and says wow i want to come and waste your time have goals and finally the last point psalm 23 verse 5 you must walk conscious of the anointing oh yes oh yes triumph you can't rule out the anointing psalm 23 verse 5 walk conscious of the anointing it's projected thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies he says thou anointest my head with oil and my cup overflows there is a relationship between the oil on your head and the cup on your hands there is a relationship between the results you get on your life and the unction and the grace that is upon you hallelujah this is not the year to ignore the anointing i know that as a ministry we honor the place of the anointing and the ministry of the holy spirit but in a greater way listen there are some of us who we think the anointing is just for falling down and coughing out things no sir the anointing is god's ability it's his help in your life are we together now if you are trying to climb a staircase and then it's not working and i hold your hands i have assisted you the anointing is god's assistance in your life to multiply your results and in many cases to even produce it in the first way the anointing multiplies your result by a factor that you cannot even consider i expect the anointing to walk over my life this year i expect the anointing to walk in the ministry in every area expect the anointing to walk in your business expect the anointing to walk in your family don't sit down and expect life to be casual don't draw your graph arithmetically draw it spiritually hmm. in the realm of the spirit two plus two is not four it depends on what god adds to the equation two plus two can be one thousand god can complete the rest that's what his grace is all about so don't walk as if you are alone listen he said for with god with god with god without god many things are impossible but with god I told God during my retreat, I said, Lord, I want to walk with you like never before. I believe that if I walk with you, my life will be episodes of signs and wonders. Brothers and sisters, what you see us enjoy as a ministry, among many things, is the lavish benefit of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When the anointing is upon your life, it's upon your life. You will command unending results. Unending results. The things God has done in my life already from January till now are almost enough. If he never does anything throughout this year again, I'm grateful. Expect favor to walk. There is an anointing. Expect favor to walk, brothers and sisters. Expect the healing anointing to walk in your life. Expect the mantle of honor to walk in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Believe in the anointing many people ignore the anointing because we think it's not necessary don't get into that kind of business i believe in the anointing acts chapter 10 verse 38 says how god anointed jesus even jesus had to be anointed to be effective how god anointed jesus of nazareth the crowds that come to this ministry the thousands that follow from all the nations of the world is the anointing how much publicity can you do is the anointing are we together the results and the testimonies the miracles the signs the wonders the influence the prosperity everything is the anointing you must make up your mind to embrace the anointing for every season there is a grace that goes with it you not only receive the prophetic word you receive the grace that makes it happen if i send you i have told you the message but i must give you the money you can have the message and not have the money you will still not do anything if I send you and I say go and buy me biscuit after I've told you what I want and you are ready to go but then I I know how much biscuit is cost then I'll give it to you and sometimes I will give you more in case the price has increased hallelujah 
I don't know about you, but brothers and sisters, this is my year of triumph. I believe it with all my heart. God is not a joker. I am not too proud to accept the word of God for my life. Triumph in every area. I'm walking in extraordinary miracles. I'm walking in extraordinary dimensions of wisdom. Extraordinary dimensions of grace. I'm already prophesying to myself. You can speak your own. I'm walking in supernatural dimensions of health. No sickness whatsoever. I have no covenant with death. No covenant with sickness. It's a year my graph of progress is a straight line this year. In the name of Jesus. Regardless of the challenges that come. The wisdom to surmount them is already at work in my life. I decree and declare that favor surrounds me like a shield. Extraordinary results by the Spirit. The wisdom of God defying the strategies of men. That's what I call the year. That's what I call 2017. I call it a year of extreme favor. From January to December, favor follows me like a shield. The Lord is a shield for me. I'm prophesying over my year. That's what I believe. Lord, you have declared that it's my year of triumph and I receive it. I take you seriously. My year of extraordinary breakthrough. Men are rising from everywhere to bless me. This ministry is growing to new dimensions. Flourishing. Men of prayer, men of fire, men of revelation, men of influence, men of character, men of godliness. As a ministry, there's massive salvation of souls this year. Extraordinary miracles by the hand of God. Diligent workers, men and women who love the purposes of the kingdom. And whatsoever Adam called it, that was his name thereof. No sorrow this year. I exempt it from my life. No sorrow this year. I exempt it from my life. No sorrow this year. I exempt it. The anointing goes before me. The anointing goes into every month, making every crooked path straight. Can you rise up and turn all this into a prayer? Name your 2017. Name it. Come on. Everything that represents triumph for you. I can't be falling sick this year. No, I reject sickness. I reject living from hand to mouth by the wisdom and the favor of God. I'm an extraordinary man of God. Are you praying? I access deep dimensions of revelations, deep dimensions of the anointing. The miracle working power of God is lavishly at work in my life. A greater dimension of His presence upon my life. Greater signs, greater wonders, greater testimonies. I pray like never before. I fast like never before. I study the world like never before. I rise to new levels of influence. My light is shining. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. Favor all the way. Favor all the way. Favor all the way. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm a well watered garden. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to fear their fear. Recession is far from my life. Recession is far from this ministry. In the name of Jesus, no death, no death, no death. The earth is obedient to my voice. No death. I rise above every enchantment. I rise above every witchcraft. I rise above every necromancy. The activity of the dark world. Immune to their causes. Immune to their spells. Prophesy. My year of triumph. Celebration all the way. This is a year that I serve God like never before. This is a year that I give to the kingdom like never before. I'm a kingdom financier. In the name of Jesus, the floodgates of heaven are open over me. This is a year of strange visions. Strange visions. Strange encounters with the Holy Ghost. Are 
Are you praying, Koinonia? You are declaring over your year. Every department in this ministry is functioning at optimal level. In the name of Jesus, we record groundbreaking testimonies of the hand of God. Koinonia is contributing in a major way to advancing the kingdom this year. Massive salvation of souls, the equipping of the saints. And say the sound of mourning and regret will never be heard in my tent this year. Lift your voice and pray. The sound of mourning, the sound of regret, financial woes, family woes, failure, never part of my life this year. Please take it seriously. You are creating your reality. No tears of sorrow, no tears of sorrow, no tears of sorrow, no tears of sorrow. I stop it in advance. I stop it in advance. No tears of regret. I stop it in advance. No tears of sorrow. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I must emerge victorious over every battle. I will not lose one battle this year. Lift your voice and pray. No, 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 no. Not a financial battle. Not a marital battle. Are you praying, Koinonia? Not an academic battle. Thanks be to God who causes me always, always to triumph. Are you praying? There shall be no losses. There shall be no losses. There shall be no losses. Thanks be to God who causes me always. Who causes me financially? Who causes me spiritually? Who causes me in ministry to triumph?
Hallelujah. Listen, we are praying. Listen, times of triumph. Listen, times of triumph are also times when war must end because a victor must be there. Are we together? There are many of us who have been dragging with too many things. Today is as if you are the winner. Tomorrow is as if it defeated you. You are going to prophesy. This must be my year of completion. A victor must emerge over this issue. Lift your voice and pray. Supernatural completion. Over that sickness. I can't be healthy today and sick tomorrow. My year of completion. Over that project. My year of completion. Over my family. My year of completion. The hand of Zerubbabel. The hand of Zerubbabel. That begun this work. That same hand was completed. Is my year of completion. My year of completion. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen. There are many of us, God started speaking to us. But you got part instruction. And the other part has refused to be downloaded. And so you are grounded. You are going to say, Lord, this is the year when your voice will be clear. I'm tired of confusion in my life. I must hear that voice saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Lift your voice and pray. Confusion. I'm tired of wondering whether I should take a job or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should be in Zaria or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should be in ministry or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should marry or not. Whether I should be in business or not. Lord, let me hear your voice. And with it, let me hear the instructions for my next level. End confusion in my life. End confusion in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the spirit of boldness. The Bible says the righteous is as bold as a lion. The challenges that many of us will see, let me tell you the truth. When you see it physically, it will look like a Goliath. But David ran to him and said, you come against me with your spears. Now is the time where you need to run to some challenges. Whether they are ready for battle or not, you say, no, I'm ready now. Finances, I'm ready now. Spiritual life, I'm ready now. Lift your voice and cry for an impartation of boldness. Boldness. No more fear. I will face it. No more fear. I will face it. No more fear. I will first that business and try it. No more fear. I will first this issue of joblessness and conquer it. No more fear. I will first my academics and conquer it. No more fear. my fears I confront them I no longer will run away from them I face my fears I face my fears I face my fears it's my year of triumph hallelujah fire is burning in this place two more prayer points you are going to say Lord give me speed I ask you for it give me speed I don't want to move at the pace I moved last year lift your voice and pray give me speed speed in ministry speed in my
my spiritual life. Give me speed. The result of 10 years. Let me produce it this year. The result of 10 years. Let me produce it this year. Give me supernatural speed. 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 Hasten your word. Hasten your word. Hasten your word over my life. Hasten your word. Hasten your word. Hasten your word. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. And then we are done this night. Hold on. Hallelujah. Listen. One last prayer point. The Bible says the light shines in darkness. The light shines in darkness. From January till December, everything you are going to be hearing on this pulpit will be an unveiling of divine strategies. God instructed me this year. He said, let the people of God understand these mysteries. My assignment to Koinonia this year is to open you up to the strategies that produce giants in this kingdom. I will show you mysteries that if not oh, that God showed me, I will not even teach it. I told you there are personalized dealings of a man with God. There are secrets that are for a man and his covenant with God alone that control great power. God said, don't hide anything from the people. Teach them. The mysteries you have kept, the mysteries that has produced results in your own life and that you have learned from people, mysteries that are not obvious, mysteries that are not taught in pastor's conference, mysteries that are not taught to the public. You don't buy them in tapes. The secrets behind the making of men. You are going to pray and say, Father, may my eyes see, may my ears hear, and may my spirit receive these divine strategies. Lift your voice and pray. For every koinonia service, Lord, I'm not ready to waste my time this year. Divine strategies. The mystery behind the making of giants. The mystery behind the making of stars. The mystery behind men becoming systems of earth. hallelujah hallelujah I just I just had something in my spirit and let me add it as a prayer point and the Lord is saying that we should pray and ask him to roll away every shame this year listen to roll away every shame you can excel in one area yet another area is not working Naaman was a captain but he was leprous I like you to say Lord every shame every 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 shame it must be rolled away this year take it from my life lift your voice and pray i don't know what area you have seen shame for brothers and sisters cry to the god of heaven take the reproach away from my life take the reproach away from my life take the shame away from my life that's what the lord is saying we should ask him take away the shame from our families hallelujah let me prophesy over your life in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every prophetic word from God 
as revealed may it come to pass in your life this year in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that everything that hitherto has been a hindrance to the word of God performing in your life this year it is swallowed up by the message of God I decree and declare over your life hear me every legal access Satan has had to make sure prophecy does not come to pass on legal ground the blood speaks for you this year in the name of Jesus Christ listen one of my assignments this year is to make sure you prosper financially you must criticize me say whatever I must make sure the people of God prosper this year I pray for you in advance the wisdom and the favor these twin forces that have produced wonders in the financial realm the mystery of wisdom and the mystery of favor may it work in your life this year in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare you will not lose any single battle this year you will not lose any single battle this year I borrow the prophetic words of God's servant Bishop Oyedeko and I prophesy to you that this year your case is different I say it again this year your case is different hallelujah a level of result listen I trust God with you that 10 years track record of results God will compress it and produce for you in this year in the name of Jesus Christ some of you before April your goal for the whole year would have been achieved before April believe me when I tell you before April your goal for the year would have been achieved and I pray for you the spirit that makes many of us start well but never finish well every year is like that you start you are excited by April you've cast out by December you have given up I pray for you from January I'm praying for you that every year will be a multiplication of grace and strength and vigor. the grace to follow up on your goals I release it upon you in Jesus name finally I pray for you listen there is a role that the Holy Ghost plays in making men mighty we honor him in this ministry you know I pray for you the kind of alignment that must happen between you and the Holy Spirit the kind of alignment spiritual alignment that you must come into to be a career of divine power and divine results receive grace for that alignment in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord Hallelujah. now everyone stand please everyone stand there are people here this is our first meeting for the year and I told you the basis of exper experiencing a triumphant year listen is that you are born of God to be born of God means you have come to a personal knowledge of Jesus Christ what he has done for you I don't want to take for granted that there are people there are several people here and all the overflows outside and there are thousands of others listening online I believe that there are people here who are saying man of God I have been waiting for an opportunity to run to Jesus and what a good way to start there are others who are saying man of God I used to love the Lord oh I love the Lord but for some reason I rise today I fall tomorrow my life has gone haywire I can't even say I'm a Christian I don't want to start this year like this some of you may be visitors who came from far as I speak to you the Holy Ghost is telling you that man of God is talking about you wherever you are inside all the overflows I want you to quickly please we have just a, a minute or two for this make your way to the front right now God bless you 
don't wait for anyone to call you young and old Jesus is calling God bless you mommy God bless you keep clapping they are coming Lord I don't want to start this year the way I started last year I don't want to play games with my destiny if you are coming from outside please run you can open the doors just clear the way for them to come keep coming some of you are still seated and God is speaking to you you know you need to start the year well it's a year of triumph and triumph only starts with Jesus he's giving you a new beginning keep clapping koinonia it's a sacrifice you are encouraging them for those who are indicating their interest for the Lord Jesus Christ online right where you are you may not be able to walk forward but you can listen and participate in the prayer hallelujah keep coming we may start the prayer but keep coming hallelujah now thank you so much there are people here young and old listen i know that some of you are making a decision genuinely for the first time i know that others may have made a decision but you want to concretize your decision you are saying i'm tired of playing games with god it doesn't matter what category i want you to pray this prayer it's a supernatural prayer with all your heart lift your right hand and say after me lord jesus please don't pretend it you are not you are not reciting a poem lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i ask you to forgive my sins my Lord and Savior I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from today I'm a child of God I am born of God make my life beautiful make my life glorious make my life victorious Father, I pray for these ones. I'm praying for you now. Help them, please. Help those under the anointing. I stretch my hands towards you and I pray for you right now. I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the power of sin over your life is broken. Help them, please, those under the anointing. I declare that you will experience a new dimension of grace with God. I speak over you in the name of Jesus that the strength of darkness the strength of the flesh the strength of sickness the strength of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus from today I pronounce you victorious I declare it in the realm of the spirit you begin to walk in perpetual victory and I speak over your life that it is your year of triumph in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen thank you for making this glorious decision it's the best decision now just an instruction before you leave it is important for you to be planted in the house of God. Don't just make this an emotional decision. If you don't stay within this area, you must find a Bible-believing church and be part of the workforce. That way you are established in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you stay within this area, why not? You are more than welcome. Now, I want you to follow the lady waving her hands. They'll have your details and um, we're going to communicate more personally to you in due course. Please make sure that you put all of the details that gentleman uh, on, on uh, the guy with the monkey jacket, the Lord is taking away the reproach from your life and your family. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell him. I don't know you, but in the name of Jesus, the Lord says, I should tell you no more. It leaves your family forever. You will return with outstanding testimonies in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. Please follow the lady. She's directing you. God bless you. Let's appreciate them, Koinonia. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray.
pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline 